So I thought I'd go ahead and make a video about the original Pixel in the year 2019. So this guy right here came out in the year 2016, revolutionary phone designed, I think by HTC, but actually it's a Google phone. So they had the Nexus series moved up and they started their own line called the Pixel. Now, very simplistic design, not a whole lot. Got the glass here, and then you've also got the aluminum body here. And overall, it's a really solid phone. Even today, it works really well. And of course, because of Google's three years of updates, you get the guaranteed software. Uh, so it's even running Android Pie now, which is really cool considering the phone is three years old. Now, looks really unassuming, but it looks very much like the current generation of the Pixel that we have now. Now, I do have a Pixel 3a XL, or the Axle as I've been calling it, and ta-da, there we have both of them. Now, this one is running a Snapdragon 821, which was the flagship, actually the second flagship processor for the year 2016, because earlier in the year they had the 820. So, Google actually did something really cool and got a, an additional processor upgrade over the other flagships, so like the, the Samsung Galaxy S7. So, really good. 4 gigabytes of RAM, which they're actually still using today, and it shows the viability of the operating system and the older phone at the same time. So, got a 12 megapixel camera. It, it had great scores across the board on the DxO, and one of the revolutionary things for them because it has a bare bones operating system, but it has a great camera and it has great performance. Even today, it's still a very viable phone. Now, the battery life is not going to be as good as some of the newer phones, especially uh, because of the more uh, power friendly and power efficient processors that we have. But overall, day to day performance, it's still a solid phone. You've got the five inch screen and 32 gigabytes of storage, and you've got the Google Cloud and all that for your high resolution uh, lifetime up you know, uh, storage of your photos. So that's pretty cool too. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Google Pixel in 2019. So I actually picked up this Google Pixel off of Swappa on the resale market. I paid $95 for it. It's unlocked and it still performs magnificently. I put it side by side with my Pixel 3a XL and really what's funny about the 3a XL and the 3a is performance wise the Snapdragon 821 and the new Snapdragon 670 that's in the newer ones actually has fairly comparable metrics when it comes to performance and power and speed. So even the newer pixels run about the same as these. Um, by newer ones, I mean the 3A and 3A XL. Of course, the 3 XL and the 3 uh, have the Snapdragon 845, which is faster. But uh, looking at the back there, you can see the aluminum body with the upper half is glass with the fingerprint sensor. The 12 megapixel camera is fantastic with the phase detection autofocus. The screen is a 5 inch AMOLED 1080p at 441 pixels per inch which is really good for five inch screen because your eyes really can't tell the difference between 2K, uh, Quad HD Plus and 1080p at that uh, resolution and that screen size. Um, it does do 1080p recording on the front facing eight megapixel selfie camera as well. It has a 2770 milliamp battery, 18 watt uh, power delivery, so it has quick charge with the USB-C. And overall, this phone is still no slouch. Now, it won't last as long as most modern smartphones, but of course, it is three years old. But I think that still has a whole lot to say for the phone with its viability with the operating system and its speed, even by today's standards. So, in addition to the other hardware compelling reasons for the viability for the Google Pixel, you can see here that largely nothing has really changed as far as the experience. Now, putting them side by side, you can see that there's a size difference in the screens, but that's really not that big of a deal, especially for some people who still appreciate having a smaller form factor on their phone. I know lots of people who don't like some of the newer phones because they're just so big. This is a six inch screen. You can see the bezels are a little bit smaller on the new 3A XL, but the experience is largely the same. I mean, performance wise, it still, it still keeps up. It still does all the same wonderful things. And I'll show you here, I'm running the latest and greatest version, I'm using uh, the Android Q beta on my Pixel 3a XL, but here on the Pixel, you can see, ta-da, running Android 9. And that's actually a really big deal because even up until recently, it took until the brand new Samsung Galaxy S10 came out 
a year later for Samsung to get on board with Android 9.0. Now, you have dark mode over here, which is nice on, on the beta, but overall, the features are still pretty much intact and the same. Now, performance-wise, you can still play PUBG, you can still play your games, you can still watch YouTube, you can still do anything that you wanna do because there's nothing that's really changed from normal day-to-day -day app experiences when it comes to the Google Pixel versus the newer Pixel 3 and the 3 AXL. Now, what are some of the pros and cons? More so the cons now, since I've talked about the pros so much. It only has one speaker. It doesn't have wireless charging. It doesn't have IP67 or IP68 dust and water resistance. So you don't want to take this phone to the pool. Uh, it does have a 2770 milliamp battery with a less power efficient processor. So it's not going to get you through the day as much as the newer, the newer phones will. Now, it'll still pretty much get you through one day on normal use, but you're not going to get two days out of this uh, by any stretch of the imagination. You're definitely going to have to top it off at the end of the day whenever you get home. But other than those couple of things, there's really not a whole lot that's left wrong with it. It even has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so you can use your wired headphones or uh, earphones if you want to use those, but it's still a solid experience. Uh, one other difference between this Pixel and the later generation of Pixels is the active edge where you can squeeze the sides of the phone so you can get the Google Assistant to pull up. But that doesn't mean that this phone is any less worthwhile. It's also a really good phone option for some people who don't want to spend a lot of money. Now, one thing you do need to worry about if you're going to pick up a used model or an older Google Pixel is AMOLEDs are much more prone to screen burn-in than LCDs are. And this one, it's very, very, very faint. Uh, you can see it uh, sometimes. I, I was able to see it once or twice where you could see that the buttons were kind of burnt into it on the bottom, but it's very, very, very faint. It's nothing that I even notice uh, at all, really. I, I had to look for it whenever I first got the phone. But overall, I think that the Google Pixel still has a certain place for a lot of people especially if you have one already. Uh, the Google Pixel 4 is gonna be out later this year, so if you wanted to hold on to it, you wanted to maximize the lifespan of your phone, get those three years of updates, you've already done that, and you're gonna get Android Q, which will carry you throughout the rest of the year once it becomes available. Now, it might be time to go ahead and consider getting a Pixel 4 or getting a newer phone uh, once uh, that happens, but for the time being, uh, if you've got a kid who wants a phone and you want to get them a solid device that works well and it still holds up and it's not a whole lot of money, this is a good option. Uh, if something happened to your primary phone and you messed it up, this is a good backup phone. Or if you are using a cheaper, lower end phone, this is also a good option. So there's a lot of different reasons why you would still want to pick one of these up even in 2019. But of course, there are other phones that are more uh, flag flagship capable. Uh, on, more online with today's standards you can pick up for a little bit more money but it's still probably not going to have the same level of support and the software updates and all the good stuff that the original Google Pixel does. So that's all I have on my is the Google Pixel uh, still viable in 2019 and I think that it still is. Now going into 2020 that argument is going to change a little bit because it's going to drop off with the three years of support that it's had. Maybe it's time to go ahead and migrate and move over but for right now I think that it's still a pretty solid phone. So that's all I've got on my Google Pixel 2019 video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I will get back with you. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to get future uh, videos and notifications by hitting that notification bell. And I'll see you guys next time.